Hello guys, welcome back to this uh, Alpha 33 restoration. My kid just loves to play with, with the steering wheel like this. And I can hear, because he did this, and I can hear that the bearings here on the column are not good, okay? So he already helped me on something. Really, I'm, I'm always very nostalgic about this car. It is a very great feeling to be working on this. And I always try to have the most time as possible to work on it because I don't want to rush anything. On this episode, I will remove here the dashboard, the steering column, the climate control, and outside that area there of the climate control too, and the brake servo and whatnot, all of that wiring will come out, okay? Maybe then on the separate video, I'll do the floor, the ceiling, and the doors to wrap up this first, uh, this first um, phase of this restoration. On the previous episode here about the cluster, I did remove the cluster to show you some things about the, the ref counter or the tachometer and the speedo and for that I already removed it some few months ago. To do that it, it is not very difficult, you just want to take out here these bottom two bolts of this plate, of this cover, okay, and the cover should have two pins over here but these ones are broken, all of them are. And then on the bottom of the cluster, you have here this plate that goes here, okay, on the bottom of the cluster. And the best way to reach it is to remove here the covers for the column. It's not very difficult at all. You just want to remove one, two, three, four bolts, five bolts that it has, and it just comes off no problem at all, okay? Then on the assembly, I will do a very thorough uh, video how to assemble all of this of course okay if you have any questions about this uh, this assembly please tell me on the comments below so i can uh, try to be more specific about this okay so this is already done and it was repaired because the ref counter was not working properly here on the speedo it was also made a good maintenance on it as it was there on the repair guys the company is total centralinas it they work here in Portugal, but they supply worldwide, okay? So down on the description, you have videos for them. And also, if you want to, I have the contacts for them, okay? So let's start here maybe with the steering column, okay? I want to maintain the seats the longer that I can, so I can work on the dashboard seated because I'm all sore because of that gearbox of the Alpha 159. I'm very sore, I'm very tired, and I hope to have here a good content for you so let's go by the way weird news yesterday i had here in an engineer a structural structural engineer taking the measurements to do a do a cage around the car like uh, like jethro did on this channel thank you jethro for that idea and uh, i will do for this car but it will be a cage for most of the cars so that cage after this car will be sold or rented to to workshops so they can um, use them as well in my case uh, this cage will serve for the body shop and for the for the painter and then when the car reaches here in the what a year or two <laughs> when it reaches here my home again i will put them in, in the long wise um, way so i can work better in the cage for now so i can rotate the car so it, it will be an eight side cage so i can rotate it in several angles uh, including 90 degrees, 180, 120, and some more. So uh, it will be nice to put the fuel lines and the brake lines and whatnot without having to be uh, always on the ground, on the cold ground on the winter too. I do not have a lot of uh, these assemblies on 33 under my belt, full disassemblies that is, but I already have tons and tons on other cars and we t tend to understand the logic of assembly and disassembly of uh, most cars, in most cases. So, on here, it's very easy to understand. We want to take out here this bottom part of the dashboard, which has the speaker and some relays over here attached to it. So, on these older cars, I follow a rule that I created for myself. That is, there is always one more bolt somewhere there is always one more bolt and what i mean is when i'm taking out a part a 
a piece of the car and the, something is wrong something is is uh, stuck that is, that means that something somewhere a bolt is still present so on these older cars it's not common to have parts that click together they always screw together so here we have a speaker the original size is very hard to find and this is is well done i will maintain this to pay credit to the former owner actually okay so now we have here a relay and another big one and here we have the light for the foot yes this car has a light for feet when you enter it's not very bright but it has it okay so the effort is there so to remove the relay just press on the relay holder inwards and push the relay forward if it wants to we have it and on the other one we have a bolt or a screw already encountered both types on this one this i believe it is the original assembly do not remove the relays because these are attached to the, the wiring itself the wiring loom and the, you do not want to mismatch them okay a very old system and it is very easy to mismatch some things in order to take out here the center console it is not right now but we are here on this position and we can do some work on it we have here this uh, small screw this holds down the, the control for the hvac and over there we have a 10 millimeter head screw that you have to want to remove but beware that you have a nut on the other side and it will spin so you have to ask someone or try to fit a a, uh, a wrench on the outside in order to be able to hold down the nut uh, maybe my, by myself uh, it will be a little bit difficult I think it's going the nut must be stuck on uh, something corrosion or, or whatnot take out all the way on the other side it's similar now let me tell me tell you here about a small story about this car one of them i already have this center console completely out because the ac of this car it's working and when it's working the floor on the passenger side it's completely soaked in water ice water which means I have a leak somewhere. I did fix that leak. And while I was fixing that, that leak, I noticed that the floor on this side of the car is completely gone. And it is because of that, of that leak. What happened was the drain from the, the condenser was not there. No one put it in. And uh, the water was accumulating over the years behind here the the floor and uh, rusted the car completely through so the car from that point on until the back wheel is separated the floor is separated from the rest of the car it is very dangerous to to have a car like this and i'll do try to do my best to repair this okay so on uh, while i'm here kind of situation we have here the ceiling the steering column as you can see and uh, let's remove it let's try to do that okay we have it's not very difficult uh like uh, you saw on the mito yeah you may have seen this by, by now because this video is not quite on the same uh time frame as the other ones i don't know if the steering wheel for the mito is out yet so on the steering wheel for the mito you have very thin wires just a, one or two connectors actually two connectors and the, the wires are very thin that is not because it is cheaper, <laughs> it is because the wires just communicate digitally. These ones are not, these ones here are live 12 volts and live grounding, okay? So this needs to be very thick. For that we have a bunch of them, every one of them has a separate function. And obviously we have to have a lot of them, as much as we have a lot of equipment here on this steering wheel, okay? On the column. So... On the past, I will already did, did the treatment here on the connectors, so they have a lot of dielectric grease everywhere on this car. So let's remove this all together. What you want to do, actually, what you have to keep in mind, is to prepare the steering column to be removed outside of the car. 
without anything be attached to it. Look at the size of this of these wires over here. Very thick. And I forgot to put the dielectric whisk underneath over here. Oh well, maybe next time. <laughs> right? So I have some wires over here, but the wires are not factory. Are something that the previous owner did about the remote. Yes, this car has a, a remote control to open and close the doors uh, at a distance. So I have to see if I can incorporate this on the new build. Maybe depends on the on the extent of the work. For that we have here a 17 millimeter head. Yeah, that we have to remove. Just like this in on the same direction but down there a 13 nothing bolt over here this 17 is the same mm, yeah it's the same it's the lever to adjust the steering height okay so pay very close attention to that i have to take out the wires here for the the main ignition barrel like i said i do not know everything by heart what you want to do is to follow the wires that go here from the, the ignition barrel by the way, these ignition barrels were used on many supercars of the era, like Lamborghinis and some Ferraris and another thing like that, okay? So they are very common on here on our 33s, but on some other cars, like the Lamborghini from Tavarish, it uses this exact <laughs> system. And uh, just curious, okay? And also these levers over here are the same that are used on the, some Lamborghinis, some old ones, and some not so old ones too. So a zip tie out, another zip tie out, and we have here the connector for the ignition barrel. Now removing here the connector, take out there the nut and bolt, the last one. It has a washer, maybe the bolt on this side. Okay, nut and bolt, two washers, two washers, a bolt. Try to save it with the steering column. So I had there the screwdriver instead of the bolt just to hold it down, not to follow my head. <laughs> and uh, here it is. Now save here the nuts and bolts, just not to be lost. If you need to redo something, I believe I do. Not, I have not. I believe in my case not necessary for at least at this one. Maybe the nut and washer, like replating or something. Yes, this will take so much time to do. It's better to. Ah, okay. I just found out something on this car. So nice. It's better to keep everything in check and when you have to do the closer to the assembly, if you have to do some adjustment, some repair on these bolts, you can now look for the proper placement of them. What I was looking over here was this adjustment over here for the height. You can actually also adjust the the thing itself as adjustment as the as the years go by it may start to slop and you can adjust it very nice also true on the 156 you just tighten down here more more the the back nut the nut on this side these dashboards are very known for cracking this one is cracked over here crack over the there almost not so much okay but it has a little bit of a crack some just one or two and for this car that means this, this that this dashboard is mint <laughs> because they crack a lot a lot really this one is not that bad and this crack over here i think it was i think it was me actually but whatever so in this way without the steering wheel it's much more pleasant to work you start start to be more close to things and uh, 
you start to be a little bit more connected with the job okay if you want to think like that i think like that okay so now on this in this way you can start to pull out this uh, this switches over here normally what we have to do to take him out what we have to do in the past to do like this on these cars you cannot do this you will crack the dashboard you have to pull him out from and then from the behind Let's try to do that or remove the connectors and leave them in here just leave them alone and if you want with the dashboard out you can press on the tabs and remove them they are very 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 finicky okay these dashboards yeah, as you are here we want to remove some things over here just try to take advantage of your space of your workspace take out this uh, lower screw take out this side screw there are no major bolts on this dashboard it's just uh, small bolts like this that go into a frame and the frame is then removed after you remove the cover that is this dashboard it's very very simple just like any other old car as you can see we have here the the pipe that i used to drain the ac it is just more than one pipe because it has two drains this car and uh, it has to go to the y shape part it has to be plastic cannot be metal because it will freeze up if it is metal and then water cannot escape and then we have this uh, pipe to go to the outside of the of the car okay this was not present and water just rained down over here and everything was soaking wet and rusty so rusty so on this side is the same thing okay just took out take out the bolts that you see nothing very difficult try to maintain the original position of the bolts if they are original this being the 1.7 16 valve the ECU is on the inside of the car for this age for this year of construction for later years I believe it was on the outside again here the speaker with the wires just take out the wires and put this to a side save it now over the years I saw in a lot of forums uh, talking about these connectors over here these connectors this car is very old okay in order to communicate with the diagnosis machine with the scan tool you have this connector over here okay but before a scan tool existed you can also connect over here i think it was a light bulb or something or a relay with a light bulb a different type of uh, of assembly to tell you by blinking the fault code and whatnot okay okay i'm not totally sure how it works i never worked with it i never saw that kind of machine i know it was called not alpha code it was something else but uh, yes it is a very old machine like the 1980s machine and uh, it did not use this connector over here it just used the combination of these ones i also know uh, something about a shunt that is made between i think these two maybe for something <laughs> i'm not completely sure it was a long time ago and i did not do the research to talk about this because well <laughs> i didn't okay lack of time i believe okay but uh, if you want if you know something about this please tell me down on the comments again here on this side we have this small bolt this bolt holds down holds down the bracket for the climate control facing fascia facing fascia fascia yeah yeah and uh in this one here holds down the this body okay same thing here we have a nut on the outside and it is surprisingly coming out hooray underneath the door for the glove box over here we have three bolts these three bolts only remove the door itself do not remove the glove compartment itself this one it was already repaired by me it, it is kind of good more bolts around the glove box compartment to remove it and be careful here with the light in the switch they are different these two over here i think they are different from the other ones i have to see on the air okay as you can see over here we have the connectors for the glove 
the glove box light. Starting to move. Now he have, we have here these vents, mine are not complete, mine are missing here, I have them, okay, I have the pipes that go here to the inner part, but uh, they don't, do not fit well, and this keeps falling off, so I just remove them, okay, we have here four bolts, I, I'm sorry about the camera angle because of the sun I want to... Unless, what do you think now? <laughs> Much better. <laughs> so remove here the four bolts or screws. Screws. Very important to remove those two screws on the sides because they hold down to the fascia and uh, they will not come off with this front uh, center console. The dashboard is very spongy on this area, so as you can see, it moves about. We have the center console completely moving. It is a big part, it is a big piece, so you'll have to swing out like this, okay? And for that, my handbrake over here is in the way, kind of, not very much, but it is a little bit. And I have to remove it, and why not talk about it now? All handbrakes on all Alpha 23s are a mess, right? Yes, a bit, yeah. Uh, I did repair permanently my handbrake because I discovered what it was the problem. And the problem was a bad design from factory on the cable holders. i show you in a minute, okay? So I did repair mine. It is fantastic. Really, really, really good. We have three screws, three bolts, six millimeter X head. Just remove them with three washers. The issue is not on the handbrake itself, the handbrake is marvelous, the lever is very good. Now, this uh, handbrake assembly has some uh, spacers underneath, be careful not to lose them. Or be careful to track them down if they fall off, okay? Sometimes they fall to the inside of the, the, the floor lining. Normally the heights over here, they come with the bolts, because they are very snug to the bolt. Again, we have here the wire for the light. Let's take it to the side. And we can remove the actual handbrake in one go from the, the cables over there. So the cable holder has this big thing over here. We can raise up here the, the lever. Raise it up like this. And make the cables pass through the holes. These cables are new. Very recent. So it's out. This over here is the cable, the handbrake cable holder. The problem with this holder, with age, it starts to crack over here, starts to bend, crack over there, starts to be a, lit a little bit deformed or, the, or with a lot of deformation. And we start to put some washers under, under here to compensate the length of the cables and whatnot. And that got me thinking, well, what exactly is the problem? 
And I think the problem was this part over here was constructed to do a, a force that is not this one. So the force that is infringed on this part is as you pull the cable over here, this or this one, okay, this outer shell of the cable will try to go that way over there, okay, to the driver's side to the front of the car that will create here enormous forces on this part and try to crack them but before cracking them it makes it makes an if a spring like effect which makes the the feeling of the handbrake very springy that you do not know exactly what the r force what force are you applying to it so what i did is to modify it okay you know i hate modifications you know that okay but when they are due to do, I made them, oh yeah, and I really made this one, okay? What I did over here, it is a part that counteracts on that force. So if I have here a force forcing this area to that side, I have here a support for it. So this support transmits all of that force to the floor of the car. This area over here will not move ever again, never more, okay? Great band, by the way, and on this side the same thing. I'll remove this in a bit as you, so you can see. The challenge was to put these two parts in the way that they are permanently leaning on the body of the car without making any stress on the bolts or whatever, because if so, they can uh, loosen up or start to crack somewhere else. Because this area of the car over here is not straight; it is like a a semicircular uh, shape and I had to be very careful to try to match the curvature of the sheet metal underneath and I and then I just add here just about of a millimeter up to be able to put this uh, material underneath not to create any more corrosion this system was working for about I don't know two three years thereabouts and it was magnificent. Every time I, I go into the MOT, which is once a year, it always passed with flying colors. And I already did had this experience with other 33s, and it's always a very challenging thing to pass them on MOT. I do not know if it uses a 13 millimeter head, but I think with a six hexagon, one it will be for the best because of the space because of the space to put the wrench it's not great at the time i painted this part and now it will be powder coated to be much more resilient oh come on on the bolts over here i put a normal washer and on the between a lock washer on all three bolts And as you can see, here it is the part modified to meet the exact curvature of the body of the car. As you can see over here, this uh, part is like a bent over here. It has to meet the curvature of the body of the car. That is why it was so challenging, but at the same time, it was very satisfying. And uh, those welds over there, they were made by me in very specific positions not to be too much and uh, when I have a good machine yes I can kind of weld okay I do understand about the temperatures and penetration on the welds as you can see over there a very very meticulous weld over there and over there too and it had to be over there okay and on also on the bottom okay very I'm very proud about this uh, modification I really am really very very proud ah one more thing <laughs> the wiring for the lighter <laughs> Sorry, that is why you must be very gentle on these old cars. You may seem it may seem that I'm being a little bit uh, being too much on this kind of stuff, being too careful, too picky on this. But uh, if you 
do this job with this thing in mind that everything is very, very, very fragile, which sometimes is not. You end up having here this kind of feelings when uh oh something is wrong and uh, deal with it, okay? Yes, I cannot remember exactly how it is done. I will just remove the wires. On all cars, do not be a hero, okay? This is for the light bulb. This is for the light bulb of the cigarette lighter. And this bottom one is for the lighter itself. Everything is loose. Yeah. We can continue. I have here a, a wire, a grounding wire for the light bulb of the ashtray. It was this one over here. Just pull it out, okay? So guys, I think it's time to take out the dashboard. Yeah, what do you think? I want to leave here this uh, climate control to the final part. I want to take out here the dashboard if I can to be safe and to deal with the wiring later. Uh, yes, in, because in that way, to take out here this uh, climate control, which you have to take out from the outside. Um, not necessary to take out the dashboard for that. Yes, I know, but uh, I have to take out everything. So I'll start with that. To do that, you have to take out here this, uh, uh, this vent, this metallic one. And you have two screws over here, one over here, one over there. And you have two nuts one over here, another one over there with the grounding. Uh, I think it's not original, but whatever. And uh, I think that it is would sufficient to take out the dashboard. I have to see here these uh, buttons, the wiring for them, and see if any of this wiring is attached to the dashboard very carefully. On my 75, I have the issue here on the buttons. The buttons are actually the same, I believe, where the pictogram over here does not light up, but the buttons work perfectly. And on some, the light over there to say that they are on does not also does not work. But again, the function of them work. Uh, before that, the position of these buttons, I think it's not correct. I think also it depends on the year of construction or on the day because the wiring has to have the 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 loom has to have the placement of them but I think the position is not correct I have to see on Epper or somewhere else to put this on the original configuration on my 75 that does not work well the pictograms that do not work and i already could saw that i have a grounding for that a common ground for lighting the pictograms uh, as far as i could see i have a burnt wire the wire then goes to the common ground and um, do, do not know if that is the problem yet because that dashboard seems to be a little bit more difficult to take out uh, of the um, regarding this one but i have to t remove it because i will take care of the rust and the, all of that stuff on the outside of the car on that uh, wiper area and i want to have this inner area available for the body shop to take care of it okay so if you know any issue common issue on the 75 about that that problem tell me on the comments below so we can uh, exchange some ideas about that okay I think these two ones are not really necessary to remove because they make part of this uh, uh, of this uh, chassis thing on the back side over here. But better safe than sorry. Not to be lost. That side I have a grounding. I think it is for the remote 
buttons thing. But I will check that everything once the wiring is on the on the floor. Really, a, actually, it is a great place to check for wires, wiring looms. It is on the ground because you can spread everything and watch for any problems. Do not break, please do not break. So on this side is completely loose. On that one I have to be very careful about these connectors. Yeah, one is out, the other one, two. So those two next. Oh, my hand is so big. Now I can try to remove it. Oh, easy. Put your hand here on the middle it, because it, you have a metal frame, not chassis frame. I did here some wiring for the speakers that I have to cut. It's not made correctly. And I'm not very sorry for that. Oh, I have a cable to disconnect before anything else. So back again to this place, or kind of. I think I can. Come on. Stay in there. Please. Ah. Not here, here. So I have this cable over here. They have to I have to disconnect one side or the other. Maybe this side. These are very easy to do. Just have here a small clip. And you do like so. And you remove this little clip over here. And then it's just a matter of taking out the cable. You can put again this little clip, not to lose it. And now I think we can take out, once and for all, the dashboard. One more, yeah, one more, yeah, it's the buzzer. It was the buzzer for the door opening, open, with the lights. When we have the lights on and the door open, we have a buzzer for that. It was, it was just these two tabs over here. Now I know, I know, yes, I know that the, the scary part here is the wiring. And uh, for the sake of the video, let's try to avoid this today. Let's just, uh, my God, what is this? Let's focus here on the climate control and taking out, taking out here the pedal assembly, okay? And then on the other video, because the wiring also runs through the floor, for that video, for another video, we'll do the wiring with the floor. Okay, uh, let's try to make it simple on this video, um, and then on the other one, let's take take care about the wiring. Okay, try to remove as much as you can from the inside of the car. Still, okay, it seems to be glued down. Okay, nice. Yeah, we have here some clips, very, <laughs> very not normal on this car to see clips. Two screws over here, over there. Take out this very old zip tie. And this one is reusable, as you can see. This one over here is a more modern one. Just have to pry it out like this. Just remove everything that is around the climate control over here. I have here just one more connector. Like this. I have there a cable that goes here to the selector. Uh, I have to see from where I will remove it because on this side it seems to be a lot of work. Yeah, it seems to. Maybe on the other side. Once I, we get to the outside of the car, I will tell you a story about the climate control on these cars. Many people complained about the lack of heating on the winter. 
I have a very cool story for that. Let's just check if I have any other bolts or nuts. It does not seem like it, but let's carry on on the outside. I think it's just to glued on with the uh, with the foam. I, I believe so. And here you have it. This is my repair for the draining. I have one drain over there that goes around in loops over here. Another one like this. I put in this case a T accessory, uh, but from factory it is a Y, a Y one, a Y shape one, and goes out to the outside of the car. I can remove the hose like this or I can take it out from there. I can choose to do one of two or I can remove them from here. Whatever I want to do, okay? But it is necessary and crucial to have it. It's tight. Don't want to break. Ah! Okay. Do not want to break the accessory, but it being so new, I don't think it will. Okay. On the other side of the hose, I have a a zip tie with a accessory to bite onto the gearbox, so my hose is pointing down into out to the ground. It's not pointing forward, because if it was pointing forward on the outside, air can push the water back again to the inside of this, not let the draining system to work with gravity. As you can see over here, this draining, draining pipe has to be pointing down, so I put there that little clip to clip onto the gearbox actually, and the pipe in that way will be pointing down or back, a little bit back. If not, uh, then the water can, the wind can push in the water again and maintaining the same problem that I had after all the hard work that I did. So I think it is, uh, I think, no, I know it was very successful because like I told you, during two years, I never had the problem again. And here the same story, you want to, to remove everything that is attached to the box, to the heater box over here. I will take out here these two lines for the AC, for the AC. Next we have here two lines for, two lines for the coolant, almost completely removed, some wiring and uh, a cable over there. That cable is the cable for hot and cold. And this car uses a not only a cable, but when you select hot, it has a switch that opens here a valve for the coolant to start to pass. That uh, system is no longer, that system is not used today. When you select uh, hot or cold, you, you always have the antifreeze passing through the system, always, okay, on modern cars. But uh, that's not the thing. The thing is, even when you turn to the hot position, that wire over there, that cable, did not open the door for the, the heat. And uh, even though you have the water passing through, if the wind does not pass through that, that gate, it will never do hot air on the inside. I had a 33 a few years ago, where the customer bought it new. For about 20 years, he was never able to put the hot air inside of the cabin. Not even the dealership was able to do it. And I, I told him, maybe, depending on the system, you have a cable that is stuck. And sure enough, with a long pair of pliers, down there with a long pair of pliers, not this one over here, the other one down there, you pull it or push it, I don't remember now, you switch the position of it, and voila, you have now the hot air inside of the cabin. What happens is the cable strips on the selector side, the, the outside of the cable strips, and as, as you are doing choosing the position, it does nothing. It just pushes the cable around, okay? And uh, then, then I took out the center console. I repaired that uh, issue with the selector, and uh, the car now has heat and uh, cold, because it also has air conditioning and uh, on demand. This AC line is really starting to 
has to come out so we'll do it the dryer over here will be replaced so no problem of uh, being open but my problem is to take this out without bending the support mm, how can i do that and without damaging the pipe maybe i can take a, take this all out and take out the pipes uh, on the bench or something like this let's try like this one of them will give up so i think it is the best choice to really take it, uh, everything out and uh, the o-ring is over there on the inside because the dryer over here it will be a new one i do not care about that i just can hold it with a vise or with the uh, device on the on the bench and just take out here the pipe i do not want to bend anything over here or risk bending here also the structure of the card yes it is that fragile so play it safe guys play it safe just take out here the connectors this is the old presso stat for the position of the well it has two positions the first one engages the clutch on the compressor the second one engages the fans to kick in okay so if you saw on my videos about a ac you need a minimal pressure to engage the compressor basically this is two switches in one okay the first switch uh, uh, clicks at about uh, five kilos or so the second one at about 10 to 15 kilos the, f the first one will uh, permit that the clutch engages the second one once the pressure reaches the 10 or 15 or 12 kilos it will uh, engage the fans to kick in and to lower the pressure in that process okay This AC line, if I can pull it, just take out here the screws. We have four, one is missing over there. Okay, so one over here, another one over here, third one, and fourth one over there. Now just take this out. It will separate in two if you want to. Save it. Then we'll just clean it very well, reapply here the foam. You want to know that it is normal to have some wires passing across over here and you do not need to remove it in order to remove the box over here, the, the climate box. But if you want to, you can. Uh, for me, I think not right now. Now over here we have again a actuator. Take out here the plug for the resistance of the speed. There's another connector over here. this I do not know the name of this but i bought connectors like this to to redo some wiring on the engine bay just like i thought we have some foam gluing this down these uh, hoses are bothering me i can remove them yes but i do not feel like it that much Try to not to damage anything. I pull it up, wiggle it up. What is happening? I think it's the cable. I, I know I have a cable missing to, to remove, but I did not want to do it right now. I was hoping for it to come up first a bit. Not happening not happening come 
Come on. I'm giving you everything. What? Why do you are doing this to me? Story of my life. Okay, it's gone. I have to take out the cable from the other side. No way. I have a bolt on there holding down the cable. Oh well. So this is the cable. As, and as you can see, I already have to put here some zip ties and whatnot to hold it in it in place. So this car had the same problem. And there on the tip of of the cable, I also had to come up with something to keep it in place. So I'm not very fond of taking everything apart again. What I'll try to do, what I can do actually, is to take out the pedal box and then try to reach the screw that is holding the cable together and try not to mess with this again. Because in order to do this, I have to take out this plate over here, the climate control plate. Cars that have AC have this extra plate over here. Cars that do not have it, don't. I'm very stubborn. I was able to take it out like this with a... So I pull it a little bit up and then here with this tool, I was able to take out here this clip. And in this way, the cable is now free. It, is, it should come out. I really want to take this out, okay? I have to take out the latch for the... Mm -hmm. No way. No way. A nut on the inside? Really? This one is good. This one, I think it's also, let me check. Why? I know why, because it, because it is broken in this, in this way. Mm. Calm down, calm down, okay? Just, I had this objective until the end of the day, and uh, a rainstorm is coming, it's getting dark, and I was not able to do what I wanted to do. Instead of putting the the damn nut, the trap nut on the inside, you put this this nut. Has to come out, right? How in the world? Oh, how in the world? Oh, just force it a bit, yeah. <laughs> what is this?
Now to remove this ABS unit, normally what we do, what we have to do is to take out here this nut, that one over there, and another one back there. On this car it's not really advisable to do that, you want to do something else. Something that I already did in the past, to do here some, uh, some repairs. I did remove it to replace the speedo, the speedometer cable. And uh, to make space, I did remove here the ABS unit. It is working perfectly, so I will, I will maintain this unit. Took out here the hoses for the ABS and for the master cylinder. I'm removing here this cover to gain better access to the main connector. And on this case, you have here this main cable that comes from the signal from the, the, the brake switch and from the sensors. And this is in this one over here is the power cable. This goes like this. And on this one, you have to pull the tab. What I do have here on the wheel arch is the bolts and nuts for the bracket over here. And taking out the entire bracket at the same time, it will be much easier to remove the ABS module with the bracket attached. As you can see now it moves about, so it is just, it is just a matter of trying to remove it. I still have down there a nut with a grounding. It is an eight millimeter nut. Be careful now where, where I'm saving this uh, control unit because it has the brake fluid inside and with moisture, it will rotten. I still have vacuum on here on the servo. Again here with this master cylinder, uh, I have to save it somewhere safe, so it's not rotten. It is actually a uh, recent Part, so I want to maintain it. Many of you guys ask me why does the servo phase servo fails. It is because the lack of maintenance here on this pump, on this cylinder, and then you have the the brake fluid coming out through through here through the seals goes into the servo and it rotten's the servo inside out. So a good maintenance here on the brake system will prevent you to damage here the servo, for example, and the ABS, and so much more. Just removing here the hose for the brake, but the brake booster. It is a plastic hose, so it has to be a little bit sketchy. Now to remove this, I believe, if I remember correctly, it is all from the inside. So you have nuts all around on the inside. And then we can take this out with the pedals attached. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six bolts, I believe. Six nuts. I think I have to take out the, the, the throttle cable. 
because this is a separate part from the the pedal box itself so i have here a ring around the pedal box i think that's it and i have to take out these two things so take this out and here you go now here remove here the, the wires this is for the brake switch very nice now you can start to be a little more aggressive with this but before that but before that we have up here three more bolts to, to remove and you can take this out of actually take out these two three bolts Don't forget to that you have foam, and up here we have some cables. We have the spring for the brake pedal that we have to remove. Pass the cable through, the throttle cable. I have here something that is not stock. I have a switch over here. I don't know what it does. A vehicle switch, but if it is, it is broken. I knew about this switch before and I tested it a bunch of times. And it does nothing, so I will remove it. We have to fight the, the glue or the, the foam. But nothing too bad. Now, these two ones. So I have the pedals attached, so I have to wiggle this thing a bit. I don't even know if it is possible to do, but I'm attempting to. I just took out one or two of these. Or this is the second, actually. Hoping, yeah, 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 yes, yes. So as you can see, a lot to remove, and a lot still to be removed. About this wiring over here, I know that it is very overwhelming, but uh, as soon as we are able to remove all of the, of the wiring of the car, it appears to be much more simple because it is. So I'm thinking here about the next video. It will be a video for the floor, and the the front seats are very normal to take out. Okay, just four bolts on each. But I will show you anyway, okay, because there is a tip or two for that. And uh, removing here the, the cloth on the floor all the way until the back. And in that way, we are able to remove the, the entire wiring that starts over there on the outside of the car and ends up on the tip of of the of the boot over here and on the tail lights also over here i will have to store all these parts okay just put them here to be more fast in doing the video then uh, on another video i'll do one for the doors so i'll do a, a front door and a rear door because they are different the rear doors have the, this part over here that actually ends up down there okay and i have two new original ones oh yeah to put in this car so i'll do one language to one side another language to the other side i think you can understand that and with that there are two videos uh then i will do a video well the interior trimming and the roof and whatnot i think i can do it with on the video with the the wiring and the floor in the seats what do you think 
regardless of that i still have to do a final video how to remove this part over here how to remove this part over here and how to remove all of these small things that the car has all of these small clips all of this stuff all of the small things that the car has on the body like for example here the reservoir for the rear washer all of these small things i think they are very important sometimes they go uh, a little bit unnoticed and i think it will be important to show you all of this all of these small things okay for example there also there here the, the adjustment for the hood all of this stuff on the hooks and crannies i think it will be a perfect final video to say a a goodbye to the car before it goes to the body shop and paint shop what do you think guys if you want to know more about this car more about the disassembly of this car down in the description there is a playlist dedicated entirely to this car okay not only this part of the restoration but also things regarding the brakes while the car is on the workshop i will take care here of the engine starting to get some stuff on top and i will take care of the gearbox i will have a lot of time for that because the car will be on the body shop for a long 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 time okay partially because the funds are not very immense guys i really hope you like this video i hope you are considering subscribing the channel if you like this video please please give me a thumbs up and if you really like this video give me a super thanks if you are able to do so okay don't forget that down in the description i have a lot of stuff that can and will be useful for you i see you next time guys bye